Okay, we're going to expand our idea of volume uh, where we're looking at just prisms and we're going to look at pyramids. And it's uh, actually really a simple uh, switch here. Uh, and so we just take our same formula as before, which is base area times height, but we have a third of it when we have a pyramid. So uh, to do this, we're going to have to find a base area. So in this case, it's a hexagon. We've been given... Uh, the apothem, and we've been given a side length. So we can use our formula for the area of a hexagon, which is one half the apothem times the perimeter. The apothem is four root three. The perimeter is eight, six times. So there's my six times eight uh, to give me the perimeter. So I plug through that and I get my value of 96 root three. And now I need the height. And so the height of the, pyra of the pyramid is this, is 20. So my volume becomes one third base area times height which is one-third of 96 root 3 or uh, times 20. Plug through the numbers and you get 640 root 3. That's our exact answer. If you want an approximation, you plug it in a calculator um, and that will give you an approximation. Okay, Works the same way for, for these ones. So for my uh, square pyramid, I'm going to take the base area and times the height and take a third of it. So it's one-third. In this case, my base area is a square. So I'm going to do 16 squared. And then the height is unknown. I have to figure that thing out. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again use my Pythagorean theorem. So I have an H, I have something, and I have a 17. Well, this is 16 all the way across. This piece here is halfway across, so that's going to be an 8. So if I look at that triangle, I have 17, 8, and something. You plug through the Pythagorean theorem, 17 squared minus 8 squared, and you're going to get 15. Okay, so the height is 15 that value gets dropped in here for this height and then you've got it, you've got your volume. So that becomes 15, you get 5 times 16 squared or 1,280 cubic meters. So um, again our volume is going to be in cubic units, so cubic meters, cubic feet, however it works. This is exactly the same uh, for a cone except our base area is the area of a circle so we have a pi r squared instead of another shape and so we do it the same way. Um, so we could look at this, we have Cavallari's principle uh, for these volumes. All that means is that if you were to take one of these and make it oblique, push it over, it's still just going to be base area times height. So the way this can look for uh, example problems is to uh, basically identify it as a cone or a pyramid. So this is a cone, which means that our volume formula is going to be one-third the base area times the height. So all the way across was six. My radius is 3. So my volume is pi r squared times 11. Right? So if r is 3, r squared is 9. 9 times 11 is 99. A third of that is 33 pi. So that's pretty straightforward. You're just using one third base area times height. Okay? On my next one, I actually have a composite shape, which means I have a cone on top of a cylinder. So I'm going to find the volume of both of them and then we're going to um, add them together. So for that one I have a radius uh, of 4 because it's 8 all the way across which means that this is 4. That's 3 and we can do that with the Pythagorean theorem or just recognize it as a Pythagorean triple of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. That's all I need. Uh, that's one-third the base area which is pi r squared times the height and the height in this case is 3 so that goes there. That's my radius squared I'm going to get 16 pi. So that's the top piece. Now I've got to figure out the volume of this cylinder here. So to do that, I'm going to do base area times height. That's not a, it's not a pyramid or a cone, so there's no one-third in front of that. So it's 4 squared times pi, because I have a circle down here with a radius of 4, and then my height is 10. So it's 16 pi times 10, or 160 pi. To get the whole thing, so my whole shape, I'm just going to add my two volumes. So my total volume becomes 176 pi cubic centimeters. All right, that's it. Um, if we're trying to find the surface area, we're finding the surface area of the cone plus the surface area of the cylinder. The way that's going to work is pi r l. So in this case, l is the slant height here. So that's a 5. And then my radius is 4. And then I'm going to get the surface area of this cylinder, where it's this rectangle. So it's going to fold into a rectangle where that's 10 and then this is the circumference, that's the width of the rectangle so I'm going to get 2 pi r, that's the circumference, that's the height which is 10 
And I have a circle on the bottom that would also be part of my surface. So I can plug in my values uh, that I have here for a radius of 4, L is 5, my height is 10, my radius is 4, and we get a value for the surface area of the cone. That's all we're doing. We're just plugging different pieces in, imagining and unwrapping. That gives us 136 pi uh, square centimeters as our surface area of that shape.